Hi, this is Kevin with Micro Measurements, and in this presentation, I'd like to share with you a procedure for trimming and pre wiring strain gauges. Now, there's some obvious benefits of trimming a strain gauge. There are times when you want to put a strain gauge in a location and it's a very tight location. You can't, you're looking at the uh, dimensions of the strain gauge and you're thinking, well, it won't fit. Uh, take a second look at the strain gauge and see if there's any room to trim it. It's actually a very easy thing to do. I'll show you that later in this presentation. The benefits of pre-wiring a gauge uh, are, are obvious in some cases. You know, a normal procedure for installing a strain gauge is to first bond it and then solder wires. But there are times when you need to put a strain gauge in a location like we're showing here, and it may be very difficult to reach it with a soldering pencil. There's also a wide variety of strain gauges uh, that are available at micro measurements, and not all of them are available with a pre wired option. Now, micro measurements can, in many cases, customize a gauge for you, but uh, you know, being able to do it in house will open up your skill level and increase the possibilities uh, for for your work. So let's take a look here at the process. We're going to use in this example a relatively small strain gauge. This is called an EA Series 13 Temperature Comp 030LB120 ohm and this has a 30 thousandths gauge length. This little picture will give you an idea of the size of the gauge. This is it on a penny. So let's get into the procedure. First, you're going to need a very good heat sink. This could be a piece of copper or a piece of aluminum. And we're going to clean the surface just as if we were going to bond a strain gauge to that surface. So that would involve degreasing it with CSM degreaser or GC6 alcohol. And doing a couple of scrubbing steps with the uh, M-Prep Conditioner A and the M-Prep Neutralizer 5A. Once the surface is clean, you can lay your strain gauge out and... This gauge that we're uh, showing here actually has a lot of room for trimming. There's a, a pretty good amount of excess backing around the actual strain gauge pattern. So we're going to tape that down to hold it in place with a piece of low-tack PDT-1 drafting tape. Now, the way to make the cut is to use a single-edge razor blade. A lot of times people want to use a set of shears or scissors to cut the gauge, or in using a single-edge razor blade or a scalpel, they want to slice it. Well, you can, you can make a very precise straight cut with a fresh single-edge safety razor blade just by lining the edge of the blade up where you want to make the cut, which, by the way, should be about five thousandths of an inch away from the foil pattern and then pressing down on the blade until you hear it snip and, and it'll, you'll hear it pop. You'll, you'll know that the, the cut's been successful. Now, the reason we stay about five thousandths of an inch away from the foil pattern is because we don't want to introduce any shear stresses that would affect the bond between the foil and the backing. Now, as a point of reference, you can use the alignment marks that are on strain gauges. If you make the cut so that you actually leave just a little bit of the alignment marks, you'll know that you're outside of that five thousandths of an inch window. So in this slide, we're showing uh, the cut complete. Now we're ready to begin pre-wiring it. So I'm going to mask off all but the, the gauge tabs. Basically, you want the gauge tabs exposed, just the areas where you want the solder to be mask off everywhere that you don't want the solder to be, which was obviously the sensing grid and even the transition areas, the areas uh, of foil that lead up from the tab to the sensing grid. Once we have the gauge masked off successfully, we can apply a little bit of flux. This will break the surface tension of the solder, help transfer heat, and make the operation go very quickly. Obviously, with an unbonded gauge, we don't have quite as good a heat sink as if the gauge were bonded, which is typically the case when you want to attach wires to the gauge. So here we're making the exception. We've got to use a low tip temperature and we've got to be pretty quick about it. Let me show you how. Notice here that we're using a fairly, well, compared to the gauge tabs, this looks like a pretty large soldering tip. This is a chisel tip. It's got two flat surfaces on it, which is exactly what you want. There's always a temptation when you're working with small strain gauges, I think, to use a very sharp pointed tip uh, you look at this and you think, well, i got to do some precise soldering. I want something that will reach in there. What will happen in the case of a sharp pointed tip is you create a point heat source when it touches the foil. Now, that foil 
is very, very thin, doesn't have any thermal mass, so that heat doesn't radiate out through the foil in order to transfer heat and melt the solder. So what you end up doing is turning up the heat on your soldering pencil to the point where you're excessively hot. Uh, the tab may tin, but there's a good chance that you're going to cause the foil to delaminate from the backing and cause the gauge to be uh, scrap. So what, what you can do to avoid all that is use this flat chisel tip. The idea here is that the flat surface of the metal tip is going to cover all of the foil at the same time. Therefore, it's going to transfer heat evenly and instantly uh, to the whole tab. Doing this, you can use a much lower tip temperature, and since it covers the whole tab, you're going to be much faster at getting the tabs tinned. This slide shows the technique where we've laid the solder over the tabs. We have a freshly cleaned and tinned tip, and then we're going to press down firmly. Now, I will mention here that it's important that the metal tip actually contacts the tabs. you got to press with some firm pressure here. You don't want to move back and forth, no movement, but you do want to press very firmly for this to be successful. And in less than a second, you can get both tabs tinned in this case uh, very nicely. The flux will break the surface tension. If you do get a solder bridge, you can remove it by cleaning the tip, uh, applying a little bit more flux to your, your tabs, and then hitting it with that clean tip. The, the excess solder will flow from the tabs to the tip and you can pull it away very quickly and you should end up with tabs that look like what's shown in the picture here. Once we get the tabs in, we're ready to work with the wire. Now, the wire that we're gonna use in this example is a 36 gauge copper wire. It's a solid copper wire, very fine, and it has a polyurethane enamel insulation. Now, the nice thing about that polyurethane enamel insulation is you can simultaneously strip it and tin it with a soldering pencil, and that's what's being shown here. There's a bead of solder that's placed on the tip. Then you insert the wire into that molten bead of solder. And if you just do that, nothing will happen. So what you got to do is feed in a little bit of more solder. This is a rosin core solder, so it contains flux in the core. And as you do that, hold it for about two seconds, pull it out, and you'll end up with a wire that is uh, pre-tinned and stripped of the polyurethane. The next step is to lay the wire out, get it taped in position. Here you can see we're using a very thin strip of that uh, PDT-1 drafting tape to hold the wire in a good position and hold it in place while we reflow the solder connection. That being done for both tabs, uh, we're now ready to remove the flux. Now, to remove the flux, we're going to use M-Line Rosin Solvent. The, the, the other thing that that will do is it will soften the mastic on the paper drafting tape and allow that tape to just kind of float off there without putting any stress on the gauges or the wires. Once you get the tape off, you can work the brush around the, the solder connections. We want to remove every trace of that flux. Now, to do that, we're going to dip it in the bottle and and blot it dry between a couple of gauze pads. Again, there's no rubbing motion here. You would just dip it in the bottle, put it between the gauze, the gauze pads, and apply slight pressure, and then repeat that about three to five times. When you're all done, you'll have a, a gauge that's pre-wired, uh, it's clean of any residual flux, and if needed, you can now go ahead and proceed to trim off the other three sides of the gauge using the same technique that we did before. This would be with a, a single edge safety razor blade and just use a downward pressure, uh, no slicing motion. So there's our completed gauge. This is pre-wired. We can fit it uh, in a much tighter area than we could have uh, before this operation. Another thing to do is do a little inspection because when you're, you're soldering to a gauge and it's not bonded, uh, I mentioned before it's not as good a heat sink situation. So there's a chance if your tip was too hot that you may have uh, unbonded the foil from the backing. So what you're looking for here is the same color that you see under the sensing grid and the transition areas as you see under the gauge tabs. The idea is that no heat was applied to the sensing grid, so that foil under the gauge tabs, if it's bonded as well as the sensing grid, should all look the same color. So you're really just looking for any obvious lifting of the foil or any discoloration that might, might cause you to look a little closer. And for reference, there's our gauge back on the penny. It's pre-wired and much smaller now. 
Once you finish the whole thing, if you're not going to bond the gauge immediately, you can insert the gauge back into that Mylar sleeve that it uh, is shipped in, uh, wrap the wire around it, and secure it with a piece of drafting tape, and you can, you can then store it for bonding later. I hope this procedure is helpful. I hope you'll uh, give this a try and uh, practice it. It will expand your skills. It'll open up more possibilities for you as a strain gauge installer. And as always, if there's any questions, don't give, uh, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Micromeasurements. We have uh, application engineers on staff who can answer all your questions. Thank you.